you listen to certain Aston Villa players that comment on Talk Sport, they'll tell you he's as good as Diego Maradona. Welcome to One to One with Simon Jordan. Keep leaving your questions in the comment sections below and I'll get to them next week. Going back and looking at myself like some character from the Shawshank Redemption, having a word with myself 20 years ago, would I do the same things again? Of course, you'd probably do the same things again in terms of the ultimate decision to buy the football club. Would you make the decisions that you make during it? It's the scorpion and the frog analogy. If you can look back on things and say, I wouldn't do things differently, yet your outcomes weren't where you want them to be, then you were fool. So of course I'd look back and say, if I do things in the same way, I'll get the same outcome. So I'd look back differently because I wouldn't want to end the way I did. And I wouldn't want to spend as much time out of the Premier League as we did at times. So I would do it, but I'd do it with a subtle difference at times. There's a balance between being an active owner that wants to have an advantage point on his football club and crossing lines where you don't belong. You don't belong in team selection. You don't belong inside the dressing room. Not because of all the crap that you're led to believe that it's sacrosanct and the dressing room is an inner environment that people shouldn't be in. Often the reasons why that is portrayed is because like the Wizard of Oz, there's nothing going on behind the curtains. But I've always felt that you need to draw a line between involving yourself in what the manager's supposed to do. The manager is supposed to pick the team, manage the team, live and die by his decisions. Sometimes they need to be held up. Sometimes they needed to be given support. But the line for me was knowing my place. My place was the chairman, the owner of the football club. I didn't need to walk around with a hat reminding myself that I was Mr. Chairman. I just needed to let people have enough space or rope to either run with or hang themselves dependent upon their ability. The most difficult task the only task you've got as an owner of a football club, really, the only thing you really need to do, or the only decision you really need to make is who you hire and when you fire them. That's how it works. So it's an arduous one. I didn't used to like the idea of firing somebody because it was a failing on my part, because I had failed to get from them or I failed to identify the right person in the first place. And I used to have regrets, and I certainly regretted the first manager I fired, Alan Smith. I look back on that now, and think I should have got there much quicker. But the arduous nature of the task is that you're then confronted with knowing that the moment you fire somebody, irrespective of who you bring in, they're gonna tell you to some extent what you wanna hear. You're gonna try and find out that's not the case. You're gonna get somebody that shows you their real face. And then when they get in the door, they will want to change things. They'll want to have a different set of backroom staff and you're back into a cycle of saying, I fired somebody because it wasn't going the right way. I've got to rebuild again. I've wasted another year with somebody else. So it's not necessarily the exercise because it goes with the business, it's the disappointment of continually, specifically in football, having to recycle and reboot where you've, where you've got to because you haven't got where you want to get to. Jack Grealish to me is never a 100 million pound footballer. He's a 100 million pound footballer because someone's been prepared to pay it. But if we're comparing 100 million pounds to value and return, I don't think he's at that level. I think the casualty of him at Man City is Raheem Sterling. And I think that brings a set of conundrums for Sterling because if he's not going to displace um, Jack Grealish and he can't play down the middle, then he may have to consider his future. But Jack Grealish is a good player. I, I don't think he's at the level that certain segments of the media want to advance. If you listen to certain Aston Villa players that comment on talk sport, they'll tell you he's as good as Diego Maradona in their ridiculous analogies. But I think he's a decent player in a very good side. And it would be very difficult for him to not look what he is. He's playing in a better side with better players. He looked very good at Villa. So he's doing within reason what I expected him to do at Manchester City. I'm not somebody that works particularly well within institutions. It doesn't mean I'm not capable of doing it. But when you look at the FA, it's broken. It doesn't work. It doesn't have leaders. It doesn't have people that are ca capable of administering the game properly. And it wouldn't be the FA that I'd want to be involved in. It would be something like independent regulation. Because if that gets, that, that particular body gets incorporated, whilst I don't like regulators, because I think most of them are useless, if you can get somebody capable in, they've got a battlefield out there that needs to be won with the redistribution of finances and the management of the game. But when you rail against vested interest, and you rail against it in such a way that you make them accountable, including yourself, because clients, I've made enough mistakes, 
then you're going to make people uncomfortable and people don't like to be made uncomfortable even if it's right or wrong and more importantly you're going to make people accountable i would prefer to be influential at times i'm not going to buy another football club because i've done my bit you never say never you never know but in this instance being able to get involved in the system and break the system would be something i'd pro and break it to fix it better would be something i'd love to do but i don't think i'd ever be afforded the opportunity so let me know your comments on Grealish et al in the comment sections below. And I would especially like to hear from Man United fans for next week's show.